This is Madam President, Chancellor, uh, your excellencies and dear colleagues. My name is Marko Kangaspuro and I have an honor to moderate our anniversary seminar. Uh, I want first, on behalf of Alexander Institute, of course, welcome cordially all of you in our, our event and, and straight ahead also invite our Chancellor to on the stage. Please, Thomas Wilhelmsson. Honorable President Tarja Halonen, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Russia is one of the key elements shaping the understanding of our past, present, and future. In Finland, when discussing almost any subject, economic, economy, security, migrants, tourism, energy, history, culture, sports, etc., etc., the role of Russia cannot be passed over. We need to know Russia, we need to know about Russia. For 20 years, the Alexander Institute in the academic sphere, sphere has ha had the leading responsibility for collecting and producing knowledge about Russia in our country. And it has done so with great success. It has greatly contributed to the fact that Helsinki still is one of the leading places in the world for acquiring knowledge about Russia outside the country itself. I am happy on behalf of the University of Helsinki, or perhaps I should say on behalf of the Imperial Alexander University, as it once was, where, to congratulate the Alexander Institute on its 20th birthday. I'm particularly happy to do so not only because I personally had the pleasure of chairing the board of this institute for a couple of years and thereby getting a better insight in the work that is done at the, at the institute, but also because the institute has performed so very well during the past 20 years and certainly will do so in the future as well. Under the leadership of Marco Kividen, it has been able to produce excellent contributions to the performance of the University of Helsinki in all three sectors of academic work, research, teaching, and societal interaction. In research, Alexander Institute hosts the Finnish Center of Excellence in Russian Studies, Choices of Russian Modernization, during 2012 and 2017, funded by the Academy of Finland. This center of excellence strives at no less than redefining the agenda of Russian modernization. And indeed, I do believe that the Institute has the capacity to act as an agenda setter in research. All researchers know how extremely difficult it is to reach the status of a center of excellence funded by the academy in harsh competition across the disciplines. Already this achievement proves that the Alexander Institute is one of the hotspots of social science knowledge production about Russia in Europe and even globally. Equally important, however, is the fact that Alexander Institute has been a forerunner in disseminating knowledge to the benefit of greater society. Not only Marco Kivinen can be seen on TV or in the press almost on a weekly basis commenting developments in Russia, but many other researchers from the Institute as well. In this race, there are few, if any, departments at the University of Helsinki that can compete with Alexandri. And the societal interaction is by no means limited to appearing in the media. Expertise and research capacity are in many other ways offered to the use of societal actors of various kinds. 
and the Alexandri insight, insight papers inform us about highly topical issues like Ukraine, migration, the Arctic, energy policy, and the Eurasian Union. And the efforts by the Alexandri Institute to build strong ties to society will be enhanced in the future by the Russia Hub project. Led by the Institute, Russia Hub Helsinki will widen and deepen the Finnish know-how on Russia by promoting close and relevant cooperation between academic, business and political actors of the greater Helsinki area. This project has attracted much interest, both among various kinds of societal actors, as well as among potential donors. I do see it as a project with great potential, both, both nationally and internationally. The university's appreciation of the work done at Alexander Institute can also be seen in the recent profiling application to the Academy of Finland, bringing in new funding to this area, among others. Honorable President Tarja Halonen, the University of Helsinki feels very honored by your presence. We do appreciate very deeply the fact that you many times have found an opportunity to honor various occasions at our university. Last time yesterday, we, <laughs> we had the pleasure of having you here. We thank you sincerely for joining our celebration of the Alexandri Institute. Well, with these words, I just want to conclude by saying warm Congratulations to the 20 very successful years of the Alexander Institute. Madam President, Tarja Halonen, the floor is yours, please. So, Chancellor Thomas Wilhelmsson, uh, Professor and Director Marco Kivinen, professors, students, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen. When uh, the Alexander Institute was founded 20 years ago, so I could say a little bit like in the one well-known song that those were the days or the years when Boris Yeltsin was the president of Russia. Finland had joined the European Union on January the 1st, 1995. And being very personal, I had also just started as, as a foreign minister of this country. So that was a long time ago. But those years in Russia have already been characterized as a times of both liberalization and chaos. The future brought the economic collapse of 1998, as well as the stable and prosperous years of early 21st century. Ten years ago, the Russian economy was growing and the relations with the West seemed quite promising. The modernization of Russia and even an active welfare policy seemed like a quite like trend of development in, in, in Russia. Now we are living once again under different conditions and expectations. While modernization is by no means forgotten, the current key concept in Russia seems to, to be import substitution. When before the crisis in Ukraine, all but one of the EU countries had entered into bilateral agreements to promote uh, the modernization of Russia, today is shadowed by sanctions and counter sanctions. In a paradoxical way, the sanctions may prove to give more momentum to the structural change in the Russian economy than what um, the modernization partnerships would have. However, the increase in confrontation also bears a heavy cost. It will be very difficult to meet the big global challenges together in a world where trust and confidence are low and military spending increases. So this is as a public picture of, of the planet. Uh, 
The world leaders agreed anyway on the Sustainable Development Goals and the Climate Agreement last year. Now it is time for the implementation. Successful implementation is only possible if everyone participates and adequate resources are available. We also face challenges on a regional scale, such as the environmental degradation of Baltic Sea and also the Arctic issues. Arctic issues have also global importance and they are being dealt uh, within constructive way. Cooperation is vital in today's interconnected world. So ladies and gentlemen, the contradictory and surprising nature of the developments in Russia show how important it, it was to establish the Alexandri Institute in Finland. In addition to Finland, only Japan made efforts to increase its knowledge about Russia since the 1990s. Many in the West thought that resources spent on Russia studies could be cut as the ideological confrontation between the East and the West had ended. The Alexander Institute grew from a small think tank of four researchers to become the biggest European research institute in this field. Today, it is a center of excellence of the Academy of Finland. We must warmly congratulate all those, all you, who have built this success story. At the same time, we should also congratulate and remember the officers at the, the Ministry of Education who had the foresight to prioritize the right things at the right time. As you remember, we were not having too much money even in that time. So you all know that a beloved, successful child always has many fathers and mothers. In this case, the idea of them establishing an institute was born in a working group, I have been told. The group included Chancellor Risto Ihomotila, Mr. Tauno Matomäki, and Ambassador Heiki Talvitie. Key actors were also the Minister of Education, Oli Pekka Heinonen, Permanent Secretary Makurina, and Dr. Juha Martelius. And if you are not happy that I have not mentioned your name, I said official fathers. I didn't even mention the mothers. Okay. So in the current situation, the potential in this area is easier to see when hundreds of master's degrees and more than 60 doctorates have been completed at this institute. The fact that more than 1,300 international experts have applied to the institute's visiting fellows program since 2008 already shows how popular the institute has become. The strength of the institute is also its nationwide orientation. So one could um, say, and as an old lady, I, can, I think I can say, think that the weakness in the university funding model is that it does not encourage nationwide cooperation, even though in many areas, a critical mass of the students and sufficient variety in education can only be achieved through national cooperation in this country. So difference. It should be remembered that Finland needs expertise in Central Eastern European, Balkan, Baltic, Caucasian, and Central Asian issues, just mention the main areas. It is particularly important that Ukraine got its own study program well before the crisis started. So, Economic growth, especially in the BRICS countries, has raised hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. Uh, fine. But the flip side of the growth, however, are the major global challenges. Persistent poverty and inequality, climate change, loss of biodiversity, uncontrolled population growth and migratory flows, and new security threats. The solution to these problems becomes more difficult if the world enters into a new kind of the Cold War situation or even Cold Peace. Although the Russian leadership continues to speak of Western actors as partners, which is fine, 
the globe is round. And the role of China is now being much stressed. In any case, the growth in Asia means that the largest buyers of Russian energy in 20 years are China and India. It is very important that these global megatrends will not happen in a spirit of confrontation, but in the spirit of cooperation and trust. So, the, dear friends, I can say personally that the Cold War's War was a long period in the history. It planted the idea of confrontation deep into the minds of the people. It did not only become a worldwide view, but also established practices. Proceeding from confrontation to cooperation is easier for small countries like Finland, which do not fight for spheres of interest and only lose when tensions grow. So we know that we cannot change the world alone. We need partners. So at the moment, political careers can be promoted and newspapers can be sold through steering up confrontation both in Russia and in the West. Therefore, it is more important than ever to have research-based knowledge as the basis of our views and policies. So somebody, perhaps we, must also have the courage to say that the great powers might have a biased view of one another. Was Russia capable of taking advantage of President Obama's reset policy? Is the President Putin's administration being demonized in the United States? The fact that these questions need to be asked underlines the importance of having one's own interpretation. Despite the changing cycles of political relations, the leaders of Finland and Russia need to keep a constant dialogue. It is the interest of nations of the Baltic Sea area to prevent a slip towards the development of the military confrontation and start top-level discussions before something that cannot be reversed happens. The establishment of the Alexander Institute is also linked to our membership in the European Union and the subsequent demand for knowledge about Russia. The demand is greater today than ever. We also understand that uh, in addition to the EU common policy, Finland has a large number of bilateral issues related to its own interests, which no one will take care of if we don't do it ourselves. The management of bilateral issues has nothing to do with being soft on Russian demands or a secret Russian plot. Uh, many of the challenges we face, be they related to the climate, environment, refugees, criminality, trade, or, or energy, can only be solved through cooperation. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me once more what was the main issue of my speech. So, why we have, I have been welcomed here, is uh, to congratulate the Institute, its director, Michael Kivinen, and all the staff and students for your 20th anniversary. I wish you a wonderful seminar, fruitful discussions, and lovely evening. So please, uh, I know that your mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers always say that, my dear, you have to be very, very uh, modest and not just wait as somebody else tells that how great you are. But now I will say that please be happy and proud of your achievements and be brave to tackle new challenges. Thank you. Thank you.